right. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Who would like to open us up with a word of prayer? Come on, Baruch. The fire pressures protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I have so much of you today because I think you're going to like what I'm about to share. Um, who of us like to be in nature? How many of us like to be in nature? I knew it. Everybody likes to be in nature, right? What are the things that we enjoy in nature? Ants, of course, yeah, creatures in nature. Um, we enjoy the sunshine, water, fresh air, trees. We have so many things that nature provides for our happiness, right? The Lord provided for us. Also, we like to explore. We like to explore the things of nature. And some people even claim that, including me, I know a lot of us, you know, we get closer to God when we're in nature. We're able to hear his voice speaking to us. In fact, uh, it says in um, Steps to Christ that God has written messages on the things of nature, like the flower buds and um, the blades of grass, even the birds that are chirping. It makes us so happy to hear these things. Don't you think so? All right. Okay. Um, we know that the Lord, had, he created a perfect world in the beginning for our benefit. But then something happened. Who could tell me what happened? When everything was perfect, something happened. Yes, evil came into the world. Satan would not have us to be happy forever, so he caused sin to enter, and then everything changed after that. Everything changed. Um, like we said in our Sabbath school this morning, we, man had to work hard for a living. Hatred came into the world. Death. Even the, even the, the animals and the insects, the creatures became corrupted, and now we have to be uh, afraid of things in the nature. So that's why I want to share with you this morning something, um, an experience that I had with a creature of nature. And um, it was about two months ago, I went out into the, my little garden, my backyard, and backyard is nature. Your backyard is in nature, right? Because you have grass, you have your fruit trees, you have all these things. And I was watering the lawn, and suddenly, where I was pointing my hose, I saw something really shiny and colorful caught my eye. I'm like, hmm, wonder what this could be. So I put down my, my water hose, and I went to, um, to investigate, because I like to do stuff like that, even though I'm squeamish and I, things of nature kind of freak me out, even though I came from nature. I came from where I was born and raised. It's like the heart of nature, but the creatures of nature still scares me sometimes. So I saw, and I, well, I went to investigate and guess, can anybody guess what I saw? Was it an animal or an insect or what? What do you think would be on, on some, someone's lawn early in the morning? <laughs> I wish it was a peacock. Well, you know what? It's, the colors would fool you. It may be a miniature pe uh, peacock. Can I get someone to um, be an easel for me? I don't see any little person. Sarah, can you help me out here? <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not an easel, but I need, I need you to help me here. So, this is what I saw in my garden. Do you think he's pretty? Yeah, that's what I said too when I saw it. I'm like, what is this? I mean, I've seen things like this before, but not so pretty and colorful. Um, I tried to capture the color as much as I could, but you see the, the part that looks dark? It's so pretty, it was so pretty. It's like a, the most intense black mixed with purple and green and blue and, and diamond dust. 
sprinkle in there so it was shimmering on its wings. Oh my goodness, the, the color of the wings, it's like that um, red, burnish orange. I don't know how to explain it, but it had shimmer on it. So this is not even doing justice to what it looks like. So I decided I'm gonna, I don't know what this is. I know it's pretty, but I don't think it's my friend. So I wanted to know what it was. So I went into my kitchen and the reason why he did not get away from me is because I had wa wet it with the water. It was wet, so its wings were wet, so it couldn't fly. And it was just like crawling. So I had time to go and grab a, a, a jar from my kitchen and I caught it in the jar. So then I decided to Google it to see what this beautiful yet scary creature was. And this is what I learned. Um, its name, it's called a tarantula hawk. Hawk, H-A-W-K, a tarantula hawk. Now we all know that hawk, a hawk is a, is a bird of prey. You know, it eats other animals, like little mice and baby birds or whatever it can catch. But does this look like a hawk to you? Does that look like a bird? No, it's not a, it's not a bird at all. Matter of fact, it's a wasp. But the reason why he got its name is because, he, guess what? Yes, he, he hunts spiders, but tarantulas are his favorite, favorite food. Well, not his food, because guess, he, he's, he's kind of gruesome. He would go on the grass and wherever, and he would follow the trails of spiders, and he would catch them and drag them back to his, his burrow where he would put them. He would, first of all, he'd kill them by stinging them, and then he would put, he would put it in his, uh, in his burrow and lay his eggs so his babies can feed on them. Matter of fact, he doesn't even eat the, the spiders himself, just only in their baby stages they eat these things and they, they feed on nectars and the sweetness from the flowers when they're adults. So the other thing I found out about him is that um, he can, he's not aggressive, so you don't have to worry about if you see one that he, he's going to attack you because he's not aggressive at all. And um, the other thing is he, let me see, I forgot my, my little jot dungs here. Oh yes, this is, this is very important. He deals you the second most um, painful sting in the animal kingdom. He can paralyze you with his sting for a minimum of five minutes or more. Wherever he stings you, let's say he stings you on, his, on your arm, your arm will, would be paralyzed for five minutes or more and you would be suffering the most excruciating pain ever. So we have to be aware of that. And I know he looks enormous here, but his, his, his size in reality is probably about, about that. It's about two inches, but that's huge still for a wasp. So we don't wanna, we don't, we don't wanna mess with, with the tarantula hawk. And um, I'm telling you this story because it, it, remind, it reminded me of something. Can anybody guess what it reminded me of? Sin. Because he's so beautiful. You might be wondering why, why, why something so beautiful can remind you, remind you of sin. Oh, and I, um, he, he, he would not, because you remember I said he's not aggressive. So, but if you go in his in his domain, if you interfere with him, that's when he would get upset with you and, and he can hurt you really bad. So, like sin, sin doesn't fall on you, right? You're not lying in your bed and, and sin comes out of nowhere and, and lands on you. And, and secondly, sin, is, can, sin can be very attractive. It can be colorful, it can be fun. And, and that's how it, it deceives you. So we have to... Are you listening? Are you listening to my story? Okay, yes, anyway. Anyway, um, 
The Bible tells us in, in 1 John 3, 4, that sin, the wages of sin is death, right? And it also tells us in, in Romans 6, 23, Um, let me see, where's, where did I write that down? No, in, in John, 1 John 3, 4, it, it tells us that sin is the transgression. Baruch, sin is the transgression of God's law. And in Romans 6, 23, it tells us that sin, the wages of sin is death, right? So how, how, does, how do I come to the conclusion that this thing reminds me of sin? Huh? Because just like sin, he's very attractive. His colors, he, he, he drew me in with his, with his colors I wanted to investigate. And we as curious humans, we, we, are, we are so curious, we're nosy. We like to investigate, we like to have our own experience and things. And that could land us in a lot of, lot, a lot of trouble, right? So transgression cause us to sin. Transgression is, I know it's a big word, but it's just the breaking of law. The Bible tells us it's the breaking of God's law. And we cannot only break God's law. We can break mommy and daddy's law at home, right? And we can get into trouble. And when we, when we break laws, we have to suffer consequences. So, um, when we in, are in nature, we have to be very, very careful because there are things out there that can hurt us, things that are attractive and things that can deceive us into touching them and then, you know, it can hurt us just like sin. Sin can draw us in and then we fall into trouble and we have to suffer consequences. So let's not allow um, sin to deceive us because also in, in um, Romans 6.23, the last part of it tells us that if we are obedient and we do not break laws, God gave us a gift. He gives us the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do we all want eternal life eventually? Amen. So, who would like to close us out in prayer? Oh, come on. Come, come here, Judah. Hey, Pastor, yeah, we want to pray for the Jesus 